Welcome to today's webinar brought to you by DataVL and Didera. I'm Stephen Fagg, Director at Database Trends and Applications in Unisphere Research. I will be your host for today's broadcast. Our presentation today is titled The Role of the DBA in 2022 Changes, Challenges, and Opportunities. Before we begin, I want to explain how you can be a part of this broadcast. There will be a question and answer session. If you have a question during the presentation, just type it into the question box provided and click on the submit button. We'll try to get to as many questions as possible, but if your question is not addressed during the event, you will receive an email response. Plus, all viewers today will be entered for a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card just for participating. Now, to introduce our speakers for today, we have Katherine Sizemore, Senior MySQL MariaDB Database Administrator at DataVail, and Devin Gallagher, Senior Sales Engineer at IDERA. Now I'm going to pass the event over to Catherine to get us started. Hi, uh, thank, thank you, Stephen. Uh, appreciate the little intro and inviting DataVail to speak today. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the topic um, but first, let me uh, give a little bit of information about myself. Uh, I've been a DBA for over eight years now, um, primarily working with MySQL and MariaDB, although I've done <clears throat> a number of conversions, migrations from Oracle, SQL Server, um, other sorts of things, and have quite a bit of AWS experience uh, specifically. Uh, I work for DataVail. We're a managed service provider. Um, we specialize in databases, uh, database data integration and analytics. We have collectively uh, over 17 years of database service experience uh, and cloud experience. We uh, you know, provide managed database services for over 200,000 database and over to have done over 250 cloud migrations. So uh, we're, we're a pretty big uh, competitor in the managed service market. Here's just a, a little overview of the different kinds of services we offer, uh, projects-based, operational, managed service-based, uh, data development services. Uh, we pretty much can do it all and customize uh, whatever needs you have, uh, create a contract based on that. So um, that's who we are and, and kind of what we do. So uh, back to the topic today, um, I, I really see four, four parts of this question. You know, um, what are the current database challenges? What's the evolution of the cloud currently and the evolution of the DBA role with, with the cloud? Um, and then what is the DBA future opportunities with that? Um, cloud just has such a dynamic um, influence on today's DBAs that that's, that's primarily what I'd like to talk about. So what are the database challenges uh, that we're facing in, in the DBA realm? Uh, we, we want agility and innovation, speed for both infrastructure and code, right? Um, we need cost efficiency, uh, even more so now that with, you know, COVID and, and um, staffing reductions and such, the, we need to do more with less resources. <laughs> um, reliability, we need, you know, to have good SLAs and HA and DR needs. Um, scalability is very important, rapid scale up, scale down, seasonal scaling, and of course security uh, is a huge, huge influencer here. With the cloud, um, you know, cloud is, is the future of databases and, and IT in general, um, but it's not, it's not a pure clean migration necessarily. Uh, most of the customers I, I see uh, will do both hybrid clouds, multi-clouds, on-prem and in cloud. Um, so it's, it's a very heterogeneous mix there. Um, 
we're also looking at, you know, we have infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, database as a service, and now serverless options, uh, all, all giving more options for, you know, how much your organization is going to be involved in the actual management of these systems. Uh, monolithic versus microservices, uh, we're seeing the evolution of, of coding and applications moving towards microservices, but there's a lot of um, uh, still legacy applications that are in that monolithic state. Um, so I see a lot a, of, you know, hybrid there as well, trying to move to more of the microservices model. We're also seeing uh, uh, data is, is king. So there's a lot of diverse data architectures bringing in a lot of different types of data. You know, we hear things like data lakes and, and whatnot where um, we're just capturing as much data as we can in different ways, which leads to different heterogeneous database ecosystems. We've got big data, um, you know, like MongoDBs, we've got analytical databases, we've got the legacy databases, we have um, the new, you know, microservices model with uh, quick, you know, um, web-based databases, etc. So we're, we're coming into this, this realm of, it, it's no longer, you know, Oracle and a monolithic application we're looking at very heterogeneous mixed data um, sets and types and um, architectures uh, that can get pretty complicated as as you know uh, as they continue to grow um, but there's also a big push for databases on containers uh, kubernetes etc where we're that's that seems to be a, a growing future for databases. Uh, I would say that you know two years ago we weren't ready for that necessarily. Um, that Kubernetes most applications had a lot of most databases had a lot of challenges being on containers, but that is that is definitely the future of um, both applications and database architectures is um, running on. Um, containerization. So how does this affect our database role, this, this giant migration to the cloud? Um, in the past, we were very reactive. DBAs were there to be on call, taking all the alerts, you know, be op uh, the operational response to keep the lights on, right? Um, we would have teams of five or 10 DBAs uh, all managing the database servers in large, large companies. And that's just not where we're at today. And, you know, with, with AWS marketing and all of these managed <clears throat> database um, offerings, database as a service, uh, companies are being marketed that DBAs are you know, you don't need as many DBAs. You don't even necessarily need DBAs marketing. Uh, go to say Aurora or or any of these managed database options, uh, and and you can minimize your DBA footprint, your cost there. Um, the reality is that they will go to that cloud option and uh, realize that they really do need the DBA because they don't know the architectural uh, needs there. They don't know how to, um, how to uh, optimize the database or do that kind of maintenance and, and forward thinking and, and provisioning that, that needs to come as a strategic DBA. So where we used to have teams of 10 people all tr dealing with the infrastructure and, and alerts and managing the hardware limitations of, of the database and moving data and, and whatnot, um, with the cloud, we can become more strategic, um, being architectural consultants, focusing on growth and scaling 
right? Design, uh, in, uh, have influence over the design and architecture and long-term strategies. Um, and that's that's really where where our role is is most needed. Um, preparing for that that new technology migrations, um, et cetera, where we're focused on the long term strategy, and that that can greatly reduce the need of um, the size of your team on the DBAs, but but you become much more instrumental in long-term goals for the company. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, our the DBA function um, as, as a managed database service, right? So, so now um, instead of a team of 10 staffers uh, with managed database services, we can focus more on database architecture and design, you know, creating that best practice image that can be replicated for, for future databases, um, planning for capacity, making sure that high availability and scalability options are, are primarily focused on, um, making sure you've got cost, cost optimizations. I can't tell you how many companies I've seen um, think they didn't need a DBA and spin up huge instances of you know aurora or or some other managed database uh, where it was totally cost prohibitive um and you know <laughs> i i feel like the aws motto is if you're having performance issues just double the size of the instance right so um with with a um a competent DBA that knows what they're doing, they can look at the system and improve the performance um, without doing huge cost, um, huge cost uh, options, right? So focusing on um, tuning the actual system instead of just paying more money. Uh, platform operations, you know, we're, we're focused on uh, making sure our SLAs are are strong, um, troubleshooting performance issues, um, making sure backup management and maintenance are performed properly, um, restoring, uh, having good restores and recovery, uh, and even testing that because sometimes you don't know it's broken until you test it. Um, focusing on migrations and conversions, uh, and then uh, new features and enhancements that we can add to to the database uh, etc the dbia here can also really get into collaboration with app dev and and uh, even devops um, helping to improve the schema design and the data data management um, getting into change management and being more integrated with the DevOps teams for deployments, um, query optimization and performance tuning we kind of already talked about. But this this is where we come in when we're not bogged down by alerts and you know uh, just keeping the lights on. And then of course security is is a huge concern in in today's market. You know you don't you don't want to be caught with ransomware or or uh, anything that that can breach your system so that that's always going to be the dba's biggest concern is is user management and access management um, making sure that you're following all the security pro and audit requirements um, all your certifications etc and making sure that encryption is is uh, there all the way through so you're protecting your data So then transitioning from that kind of older DBA model to the future, um, there are a number of DBA opportunities to improve uh, your standing and, and uh, the, the benefits to your company, right? Um, when you're not just dealing with alerts, you can focus on uh, aligning with the business goals and even your future career goals. Um, 
training and developing your skills in, in more areas like AWS and Azure and Google Cloud Provider, um, getting trained in um, some DevOps skill sets and uh, automation, especially. Uh, so, you know, some some of the names that have been thrown out uh, for the future of DBAs is more more of data architects or data engineers, someone who specializes in data analytics. Um, I, I would consider myself, you know, a, a migration specialist. That's a <clears throat> key skill set that's definitely needed in this this day and age. Security specialists um, and just improving those diversity of skills so that you're you've got multiple tools in your toolkit right um, being much more strategic and engaging uh, rather than just dealing with alerts i would also say that uh, there's a there's a big trend here moving towards uh, managed service providers not not just like aws hosted services etc but um, moving uh, having companies like data veil uh, supplement your team uh, so that you have someone focused on on the the overall uh, health of your system the the getting into the nitty-gritty of your databases um, but not necessarily having to have uh, full dba staff to do that in-house um, you know, data veil specifically, we have round the clock coverage and you don't necessarily need to pay for a full DBA uh, salary. You, you can do quarter DBA staff or half DBA staff um, and still, you know, consolidate your footprint there while still having the, the uh, full capacity or, or knowledge base and round the clock uh, support that you need to to perform uh, to to have optimal performance of your systems and this this all enables you to you and your team to focus on strategic pro, pro, projects and initiatives long term um, and stop getting into the day-to-day -day grit of keeping the lights on right well thank you uh that's that's uh, kind of my my little spiel here, but we'll get more into it with uh, questions after Devin's presentation. So, thank you very much, Catherine. This time, I'd like to uh, reintroduce our second speaker for today. Once again, Devin Gallagher, uh, senior sales engineer at Idera. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Catherine. That was very informative. Um, I'm I'm with Idera and been a, a systems consultant or systems engineer for over two decades now with some of the well-known uh, tools vendors. Um, and then Idera has grown quite a bit over the past few years uh, with a number of, of acquisitions. So um, many of you probably know some of the database companies that have joined Idera from Embarcadero to Precise and maybe more recently Wearscape and Kubel. And then we have some other business units uh, for DevOps and testing. And so um, there's a number of solutions we'd like to talk to you about or, or visit idera.com or idera corp is where you can see the whole scope of the, the idera family. And then I hadn't worked with Catherine before, but um, we have a well-known tool in the MariaDB and, and, and MySQL space, Monyog. SQL, SQL Diagnostic Manager for MariaDB, and uh, the, the Data Veil Group apparently knows that very well, so that was great to hear. And this presentation is is to mix things up a little bit, maybe some terms you haven't heard um, in terms of the future, and and then some of the challenges you probably are aware of, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit more about the opportunities ahead with uh, the Q and A. But this is a, an interesting presentation we put together. Um, showing some of the scope of, of data growth and then again some of the complexity of cloud or on-premise and so here's just a quick agenda some of those challenges and then maybe ways we can help or, or vendors like dataville and, and idera can help okay so digital transformation is probably a, a term we're all hearing a little bit more and, and devops ties into that 
Um, we have uh, some slides here on data growth volumes and some of the new terms for those metrics, um, but created a little, little 4V way to, to explain these areas of, of growth and complexity. So increasing volumes of data, um, variety, right? The complexity of platforms, um, security, that's vi vigilance, and then uh, the speed that, that you're required to, to deploy these database changes and applications. So that's what the next few slides present and pretty interesting, some of the things that, um, that you'll see here. So it's a fun presentation to deliver. Here's a little grouping of, of those, right? So just the number of databases and scope of, of DBA's responsibility has changed from perhaps single platform or, or maybe a couple of platforms to, to many and, and, and variations in complexity, right? The variety changes, right? So where, where those are hosted perhaps is, is something you're exploring. And then not not all applications or databases are, are ready for the cloud. So, so there's a balance there of, of, of what applications are cloud ready or what should stay on premise. And then which which cloud vendor uh, or will you use, right? So there's three big ones, maybe Oracle we can throw in there. So we have some, some fun slides on this. And then just the, the speed and a DBA's day, uh, right, has more demands than ever before. So this ended with a 13 total, and there's a the little shamrock for the lucky 13. So fun that, that this rolled into to March and, and St. Patrick's Month, right? Okay, so here, here's some, some terms of the, the metrics and, and size of growth. Uh, and maybe these are terms you haven't heard of, right? So after terabyte, exabyte, zettabyte, yottabyte, and within a few years, we'll, we'll be at this level, right? So... By 2025, we'll be up to 180 billion terabytes of data, right? So you can just see with the, the, the bar graph there, what's gone on over the, the 10, 12 years that that's showing. And then just that, that gray box is just a representative of, of how tiny a petabyte would be compared to an exabyte and then a zettabyte, right? So a zettabyte is 1 billion terabytes. And, and we'll be at 180 billion terabytes of data within two or three years. So who's gonna manage that, right? So the DBAs are responsible for, for most of this. Um, here's maybe a look at the old days where you had maybe a couple of platforms and a couple of versions that you're managing, but that's obviously changed, right? And even, even if you had only those two platforms, that wouldn't be easy anymore, right? So here here's perhaps an example of uh, even two platforms, you'd have probably four to six versions, maybe of Oracle, probably many versions of SQL Server, as well as, as new platforms, right? So you, you probably added some open source with Postgres or MySQL. And keeping up with these technologies is difficult, right? And so that's where you need to stay current, right? Join, join se seminars like this, stay current on blogs, and, and try to keep up. So you've heard probably some of these new new architectures, right? So you know we've, we've gone from relational databases to to NoSQL, right? Now document, key value, graph DB, column databases, right? So the complexity is increasing. You can see some of the different vendors there: Mongo, Cassandra, and you're probably having to make decisions on, on where to take your, your applications or databases as well. And so there's specific choices to make, right? You have data warehouse, data lakes. Uh, so that those are, those are areas that IDEA is dove into as well. And so we have automation for data warehousing and uh, Qbol is a data lake uh, application that can help if that's a, an area you're exploring. And then some of these are, are custom to certain business applications, right? So you can see some of those there with Hadoop, Presto. And then the cloud vendors, right? The next slide we have is a little graph on the big three and the, the Gartner quadrant, but Azure, IBM Cloud and Watson, right? So we're all, we're all having to make these choices and balance control of your environments with the cloud vendors. 
and so some 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 choices need to be made there right so here's the the gartner quadrants or you can see where this was taken from and you know top right you see google azure and amazon and then you know, oracle probably could be considered in there but if you look at the the circle graph um, that 42 percent of cloud environments are, are not in the big three right so oracle would be a big percent there but um, you know you have some choices to make and this is evolving so you need to to explore and stay current and then you have some of the same terminology but different terminology right so you can see this list here with the, those big four and then what what those different terms mean right so you have google compute engine google app engine cloud sql cloud functions etc right so amazon microsoft they all have their variations but you know all, all very similar right so different but similar and then look at the complexity here with what databases certain vendors are, are releasing right so specific database configurations for the different application environments right and you see rds with aws which is you know a bit of a as, as Catherine was mentioning you know, container and right? an application container so docker versus kubernetes you need to explore uh, rds is a little bit of a control environment so if, if you need root access or or certain certain control you, you you wouldn't be able to with something like rds right so you need to explore what what goals you have and what control you can give up or, or not give up vigilance was one of the v's here and so this is just some of the security complexity but you know you probably have a security team that's that's handling this more than say just the dba is responsible for this now right so just some of the uh, standards and we have a we have a link here where you can see more on this but obviously you know complexity right from gdpr iso standards pretty pretty complex environment here just just to keep your data safe right okay and then just to wrap up you know speed right more more quickly yesterday right so here's just a quick uh, comment right um this is urgent i need it yesterday that's not a priority anymore do this instead urgent asap so slow day for a dba and then you know how do you keep yourself sane right maybe maybe companies like data avail and idea can help so we have some some other information to share with you here but let me hand it back over to steven and the team Thank you very much, Devin, and I love that uh, last slide. A lot going on there. Yeah. Um, so this really is an important topic uh, for database trends and applications and our audience. So we wanted to leave a good amount of time today to really have a discussion to kind of dive into uh, the different things that are taking place in the industry and, and how they're impacting database administration. And of course, all of you that are currently watching Anything on your mind, uh, don't hesitate to uh, shoot us a question. But um, to kick things off, um, what do you see as the top trends shaping the direction of database management today? And Devin, why don't you go first? All right. So, yeah, we were starting to address some of them, um, you know, cloud or not cloud, right? So that's, that's a big one um, in terms of trends um obviously size and complexity and then just higher expectations uh, of databases and, and performance and dbas um so i'd say you know the hybrid environments deciding between you know on-prem or cloud increased workload right with probably less less staff right less 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 of a team and and, and demand of more and then some of the maybe the you know the great resignation elements that we're, we're, we'll talk about um obviously it's been a, a tough couple of years with with covid but um you know working remotely has changed and and where you can work remotely um, with some of the you know the wage balances that have gone on now so these are things that are affecting the future in terms of uh, that question Stephen. Understood. Catherine, I uh, would love to hear your thoughts. Anything you'd like to add? Yeah, um, 
th those are all great, great points that Devin pointed out. Um, I, I also think there's a big trend towards, you know, more managed services or at least, at least uh, infrastructure as a service, maybe even platform as a service and, and kind of outsourcing some of that management, you know, um, companies focusing on what they do best and, and offloading some of that um, database or infrastructure load to, to uh, companies like data veil, et cetera. Um, I, I, sure. I also see that, I, I mean, I think it's been prevalent for the last few years, especially, but uh, I still see a great trend from these big, big Oracle SQL server, you know, uh, models to, um, to the open source communities, uh, whether that be, you know, hosted something like Aurora, where it's based on open source or, or actually just reducing your cost significantly and going with MariaDB or, or MySQL or Postgres. Um, so I, I think that's still an underlying um, factor in all of this to reduce cost as well. That's interesting. Um, our next question, and Devin, I'm going to let you go first. I love this question. Is cloud making the job of the DBA harder or easier? Well, probably a balance, but I, I would have to lean towards harder, right? Just the complexity of, of the different cloud vendors, what your application is and, and whether it is cloud ready, right? So that's that's something to, to explore and, and figure out. Um, we have, um, maybe I have a couple of, of things to mention there just to, 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 to balance, right? Um, you know, there's different reasons for deciding whether on, on premise or not. Um, and so just having to go through that, it, it makes it more complex. So, so there's that, it, if you do move to the cloud, then there's obviously benefits there, but you know, a balance of, of maybe not having as much control. So you probably are, are, are leaning towards a hybrid cloud environment where you have a combination of on-prem and, and cloud or hosted. It's, you know, I say hosted from, from, from from years ago, right? Where you know cloud's a good term, but you know these these tie down to servers somewhere, and so you know where those are hosted was maybe an old term now cloud, where you can access from from different places. But um, you know latency, regulations, cost these are these are balances to decide whether cloud or, or on prem, and that makes things more complex in in, in my my impression. Understood. Catherine, how about you? Harder, easier, maybe a little bit in between? Uh, I, I agree with some of Devin's points where it, it does make it more difficult. We have to expand our skill sets. Um, and there is kind of a loss of control with some of these um, platform services or, or, you know, database as a service. You have, you lose a lot of control. Um, but I think overall it's becoming easier. Um, the marketing out there is that it's going to be so simple. Just put all your data up in, up in the cloud and, and we'll take care of it for you. That's not the reality, right? It's, it's, it's much more complicated than that. And you still need the DBA skill set to come in and tune those databases. Someone who actually knows about databases that can, that can make it actually run without spending you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on the biggest, uh, biggest size databases you can buy. Um, but, you know, with with the cloud comes cloud automation. And now we can spin up things in, you know, seconds, uh, where before it would take weeks to provision the infrastructure to spin up those databases. And scaling is so much easier. And there's so much that we can do with these uh, services that, you know, would take us weeks and weeks or, or even just automatically increasing the size of our disk space where I, I remember, you know, 10 years ago, I'd have to spend a week planning the provisioning of a new data uh, of a new hard drive because I ran out of hard drive space. And that was a, a, you know, monthly occurrence that you had to 
prov you know, uh, provision and plan for these giant hardware updates that now we don't even have to think about it. So um, yes, we're going to have to in increase our skill set and, and learn some of these automations and maybe a little bit of programming, et cetera, to utilize the cloud to, to its fullest um, capacity. But at the same time, that's, that's going to make our lives easier. And it already has. Mm -hmm. Understood. We, we actually know, had a... Let me add, Stephen, virtualization years ago is similar, right? When, when virtual machines and things we could do very quickly and now cloud similar. So, you know, funny how, how things come around in similar ways. What, what, what's ahead? What's next? Absolutely. Um, that's actually a good segue into our next question. And, and Catherine, I think you were getting at that a little bit and uh, Devin as well. Is automation replacing the uh, traditional role of the DBA? And Devin, how about you weigh in first? Well, I, I wouldn't say replacing. I mean, D, you know, DBAs still have the same responsibilities, right? They, they, they need to take care of the database and and automation can help, but, you know, it's, it's, it's almost when you get time back in the day, to, 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 it's, does it just give you more time to do more work? Or do you actually you know, give yourself some more free time? So um, probably a combination, right? So automation helps, but then you'll, you'll, you'll just have other responsibilities to tackle as well. Understood. Catherine, how about you? Um, I, I don't think that automation replaces the role of the DBA. It may replace some of our um, traditional, you know, former responsibilities. Uh, we can move away from those, keep the lights on, reactive, band-aiding, um, you know, getting in the nitty gritty of hardware and infrastructure and patching and all of that. It, it takes away that that level of complexity um, and, and allows us to be much more strategic and taking on that more of an engineer architect role, um, proactive foresight of the database. Um, so... I think it just allows us to be much more efficient and focused and effective uh, with aligning with the long-term goals of the company where we're not just, you know, uh, whacking moles all day long. <laughs> so. Yeah. Understood. So what are the top skills in demand for DBAs today? And to Devin, why don't you go first? Okay. Well, obviously, some of the, the same experience and, and skill set are required, but but now extending that, right? Not not just single database platforms. You, you really need to be familiar with with multiple platforms. Whether it's 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 an acquisition that your company makes, and suddenly you have a different database that you need to support, or just to to make yourself more valuable. Um, so just you know, keeping up with the different platforms and then the complexity, right? So we've talked about cloud and on-premise a lot. Um, uh, you know, uh, open source, Catherine was mentioning, versus you know, paid vendors, right? So these are these are things you need to understand and, and what you give up with, say, open source or not paying for things and then other things take time and time is money and, and time is valuable. So... Um, you know, being having a skill set, staying current, um, being diversified in terms of platforms, and then having the people skills. Right? We, we we forget that sometimes. Where you know a lot of this great resignation has to do with you know some of the management uh, shortcomings and working with people. And so you you really need to have that balance as well, as well as the technology and, and experience. Sure. Catherine, how about your thoughts on this? So kind of riffing off what Devin was saying, you know, with the multiple hybrid database types and infrastructures and, you know, um, I, I think that a, a key skill set is, is migration and ETL support. Um, being able to move data quickly and efficiently, whether it's you know, migrating everything off of Oracle onto MariaDB or or doing ETLs to keep everything in sync uh, in this, quote, data lake environment. Um, 
that's a huge one. And then going back to some of the stuff we've already talked about, you know, performance optimization. When when you end up with a company who's migrated to the cloud and they didn't have a DBA on board, um, being able to performance tune that and and you know get them a, a good cost optimization um, and and a smooth running database uh, is huge. Uh, also, being focused on that architectural design, long term goals of the company. And, and being able to automate processes. Um, th those are all really key factors um, that we need to have in, in this uh, new environment. Do you think the days of developing expertise around one platform, uh, for example, SQL Server or Oracle, those are basically over at this point, uh, Devin? Fair. Yeah. I mean, we've said this a few times, right? Where things have, have, have grown and, and DBAs need to be you know, multi-platform, cross-platform, also where those are hosted, right? And then, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's that's definite that those days are over. Um, but, you, you know, you still have the need for expertise in a single platform and, and you know, the big vendor shops, um, the big, you know, SQL Server, Oracle, um, you know, the, be, being experts at those platforms are, are still a skill set that's needed. So, um, you know, it's a balance that maybe it shouldn't shouldn't have gone away in terms of that being the way it used to be. But but you, you need to you need to be multi-platform now, definitely. Understood. Catherine, um, as a DBA, is having expertise, you know, across some of the major cloud platforms kind of table stakes these days from a career standpoint? Uh, I, I think so. Um, DBAs need, need to be experienced with, you know, uh, lots of different things because the, the reality of, of our environments, you know, all these companies' environments are no longer uh, homogeneous, right? We're not dealing with monolithic, single database environments anymore. It's much more diverse cloud and and on-prem and, you know, um, uh, big data, um, uh, historical uh, legacy architectures, integrating with new micro system on open source databases. Um, so we've, we've got this, this total, you know, um, menagerie or, or collage of, of different, um, yeah. different yeah. platforms and types and whatnot. And you, you just have to keep, you know, adding to your toolkit, adding to your Swiss army knife of, of skill sets to be able to fully support your company. Understood. And it, it's funny. We, uh, one of our viewers uh, just commented, uh, well, it's a question, how has the role of the DBA changed with migration to cloud data platforms like Databricks, Redshift, and Snowflake? And those are those do seem to be gaining in popularity. Are you seeing that? Sure, yeah, Snowflake I, is growing quite a bit. Um, uh, yeah, I think, again. I think that analytics, Sorry, Devin. I no, think that no. analytics in general is is becoming much more critical to to everyone's um, environments, right? We've got all of this data, and it's even more important now uh, to be able to utilize that data effectively and um, quickly uh, to to be responsive to what we're learning through that, right? Machine learning kind of things. So um, I would even add, you know, MariaDB's column store to that list uh, for performance. Uh, but analytics is the future, right? That's that's going to be a huge factor and, and adding that other piece to your toolkit is going to be important. Great point. Because that's what companies need. Mm -hmm. Devin, you mentioned uh, data security before. Um, obviously, major concern to corporate leaders in the world today for uh, fairly obvious reasons. No one wants to be in the headlines. How is the role of the DBA evolving from a security standpoint? 
Well, you know, one thing I mentioned is that you, you probably have a, a very robust security team now, right? Where there's lots of compliance that maybe is handled not by the DBA. And so I, I think that that responsibility has grown and, and is, you know, perhaps more important than ever with, with some of the, you know, the fears and, and hacks and, and, and corrupting your data. Um, but I, 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 do, I do tend to think that um, a, the DBA world has been supported more with, with the security teams and, and those applications, um, maybe more so than the, them being the only ones responsible for, for security. But that slide had that slide had a number of, of the standards uh, I'm, I'm a little less familiar with, but you know, from even Europe being a little ahead of, of North America in terms of some of their restrictions and, and GDPR and, and data vault and things like that. So um, it's increasing and and it's it's important that it does, right? Because we're 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 all we're all we're all online. We're all, you know, at risk of, of these hacks, and and, and even at the, the regular person knows what a hack is now compared to a DBA fearing that for their job security. Sure. No, absolutely. Um, you know, Catherine, we had a question come in uh, during your presentation um, that is related to security. Um, you know, from your experience and current collaborations with cloud providers, what are some challenges and solutions for handling data security during migration and future operations and management of databases in the cloud? So it's, you know, um, migration is a little bit more vulnerable. Let's say uh, you have to make sure that everywhere your data is going to end up or or be streamed or or whatnot is is within that same protected environment um but you know this is this is a huge concern across the board where um it used to be that everyone was afraid to go to the cloud because they were worried about security and access to your data you know you can't just lock your data in a room anymore and think it's secure um but you know, engaging with your security compliance person or team or whatnot, and and your networking environment people, making sure that every every element of your pipeline, every everywhere that your data rests is encrypted on multiple levels and is encrypted in transit and at rest, um, that you've not left any security holes in your cloud environment. Um, you know, there, there are just so many levels now that, that um, we need to be aware of and protecting our data. Um, and, you know, ransomware is, is a huge issue, making sure you have protected copies of your database that, you know, even if your mainstream line was, was um, or your main data points were uh, vulnerable or hacked, being able to get get something separate off site that they couldn't access um, back up and running is is critical. So there, there's just so many elements to security that um, you know you really need to engage with an expert um, if you're not super well versed yourself already. Understood. I'd like to uh, get into the great resignation. You brought that up uh, before, Devin. But first, um, you know, kind of a comment that came in that uh, I, I think um, kind of sets the tone. As a senior system DBA, we understand that all the marketing hype of easier, faster is what the executives are buying. So they expect us to deliver more and do it faster. Oh, by the way, we are not replacing Joe that left last week. So... Over the past year, we've heard about the great resignation, people leaving jobs, um, and this has impacted some industries more than others, leisure and accommodations, absolutely. Um, however, based on reports, it certainly appears that this has had an impact on tech as well. So, Devin, do you see a skills shortage in the database world? Are, are teams basically being asked to do more with less staff? Is that, that, that how it's going? Sure, yeah, absolutely. And a uh, funny way, funny the way that that attendee phrased that. Um, by the way, we're not replacing someone. So yeah, so that that example is a good one where you lose people and they may not be replaced, and then those responsibilities are just spread across the team. 
um, I was, you know, looking into some of the numbers of, of, of the job resignations and January apparently topped this past November as the highest, highest total. I think over 4 million people resigned in January. So, um, yeah, so this is, this is a factor and, and, it, you know, it's increasing, um, the, the responsibilities on, on the plate of a DBA. And then, you know, there's, there's different factors, right. Um, that, that are influencing this and, and it's maybe not, not money and monetary as number one anymore. So I was mentioning, um, um, some of the, you know, the wage neutralization, right. Of now you can work remotely and perhaps have a wage of a, of a location that, that previously required you to be there. Um, but then this, you know, this, this leads to that, that lack of appreciation and not feeling valued. And that, that's the biggest factor apparently that's gone on with, with the great resignation and, and leading into some of the, the, the maybe lack of management where I heard a phrase, people don't leave companies, people leave managers. And so, you know, maybe, maybe that hasn't changed as much in terms of how we, how we, how we handle management, how we, how we handle the balance of responsibilities on, on employees that are, are spread thin and, and DBAs obviously um, have the brunt of that. And, and then the, the skill set isn't easily replaced. Right. And so it's not easy to replace someone that has, has, you know, many years experience and the, the 35 to 45 year old age group is the largest, largest group of, of resignations. And so, you know, that's, you know, 15 plus years of experience of people that you can't just replace. Sure. So kind of, uh, you know, in a similar vein, um, you know, during the pandemic and continuing into today, you know, companies had to, you know, pivot as far as remote access for workers. Um, Catherine, even today, how can companies continually improve that balancing out between an increase in remote access while also ensuring security and governance? So that that's been a huge concern, you know, with with COVID. Um, I think because we shifted so quickly and rapidly and in mass um, that there were probably quite a few security breaches that were kind of allowed um, just to get it out to market, right? To get it out to to your remote workers. Um, some some companies were great and and had that all taken care of, you know late, late, late nights with, with big IT teams getting this ready. But um, I think that a lot of companies are having to go back and, and make sure that those securities are, are back in place and, and shored up. Um, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's difficult because now that everyone's at home, it's not on, on their computers. Um, you're, you're opening yourself up to, that that vulnerability of, of the human right <laughs> um, vulnerability uh, where really we're going to have to come back and educate our staff and um, make sure that they know what is okay and what is not okay with this uh, remote work environment right um, making sure that they are not the breach even even if we have everything else of the pipeline uh, taken care of. And uh, another huge principle that, that we love as DBAs is the principle of least privilege, making sure that they don't have access to anything that they don't absolutely need access to. Um, so that even when those sort of breaches occur from the uneducated staff person that thinks they're just checking their personal email, um, that they can't, that a hacker can't get access to more than that person should ever have had access to. So um, it's a it's a complicated question. It's it's a question that we're all struggling with. Um, but I think that it it needs to be a high priority uh, for every company now. Understood. We have a lot a lot of questions that have come in from viewers. So I want to make sure we uh, get to these as well. And I know we're right. starting to run out of time, but uh, people are staying with us. It's, a, it's an interesting discussion. So 
One question, um, as there are so many cloud vendors and so many certific certifications offered, do you find possessing any of these certifications valuable? Uh, Devin, your thoughts? Sure, I mean, certifications can be valuable. I, I'm not sure the scope of, of all the, the certifications you mean. I don't know if I can expand on that much more. Uh, I'll jump in there. Great. Uh, I think I think that the skill set is more important. But if you're out looking for a job or looking to uh, increase your standing, etc., sometimes that can just open a door that may have not have been open to you before. Um, but definitely, the skill set is far more important. And I will always say that. You know, I I as as a person that majored in history and religion in college, <laughs> um, you know, the the piece of paper doesn't necessarily say that that's that's your full competency level, right? Knowing the platform, knowing how to use the system is far more important. Great, great points there, Catherine. Maybe I don't feel as intimidated with some of the email signatures and, and titles and, and certifications people list. So great, good points there. Skill set more important. Okay, next question. Do you see companies moving more towards pass offering uh, for database or infrastructure as a service in the cloud? And uh, Devin, why don't we start with your thoughts on that? Hmm. A little curveball there. Good question. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not able to expand on that much. I'll jump in. Um, I think that it really depends on the needs of the company. So I see a lot of uh, variety there of both infrastructure as a service can be very, very important, very, very utilized across the board. But um, platform as a service, if you're running something smaller, if you are doing a dev environment, et cetera, et cetera, um, it can be extremely valuable for those as well. Um, certainly, it's it's popular on both sides and sometimes the wrong one is chosen, I would say, <laughs> uh, where they could have used infrastructure of a service more effectively. But, um, you know, I, it's, it's definitely something that you should consider depending on your needs and depending on your database size and, and all these other factors. Understood. Okay, so I think we have one more t time for one more audience question and then I have a question I'd like you to both weigh in on. Uh, the question uh, from our audience, cloud vendors push their managed services, but actually do very little except keep the lights on and internal leadership doesn't understand this gap. What is the most effective way to uh, fill that gap? Uh, Devin, any thoughts on this? Hmm. Let me pass to Catherine. So uh, this is this is a great question uh, because it's it's so true. Um, the cloud vendors are advertising that that's it. We'll take care of everything, but it's it's a huge gap between just running this infrastructure database and keeping the lights on and actually being performance tuned and operationally sound, right? Um, it's great if I put you in Aurora, but if you don't know what you're doing, if you're um, if you're not running performant queries, if you're not tuned, if you're not um, performing right maintenance on that system, you're going to have a, a very slow, sluggish, um, compromised application experience. So, um, I mean, some of it is, is counteracting that cloud marketing. Um, some of it is, is getting them to understand that you need, you need more than just um, that base level and and some of them will uh, unfortunately learn the hard way where they they get up there and then they're like oh my gosh <laughs> we used to perform so well and now our application is crashing all the time and we're having all of these issues and then they end up going to more um, something like data veil last you know getting getting involved with a managed service provider that can come in quickly and assess and and improve that service um, improve that database uh, by by filling that gap. Um, sometimes, you know, the DBAs are overlooked uh, and and our voices aren't always heard. But when it's very visible, when it's evident, <laughs> when they learn the hard way, um, sometimes that's the only way uh, we can get their attention. 
Understood. I'd like to close out today uh, by asking you each a question to weigh in on. And Devin, why don't we start with you? If there's one thing you'd like the our viewers today to walk away keeping in mind, what would that be? Idea I can help with these issues. We'd love to partner with you. All right. And Catherine, how about you? Um, you know, the landscape of databases is, is changing and um, we're going to have to, as DBAs, improve our, our toolkit, um, in, uh, increase our skill set level um, and kind of change our outlook. Um, certainly Dataville <laughs> can help uh, be that Swiss Army knight for you, um, but uh, I encourage people to you know, uh, embrace the cloud and, and utilize um, all that it has to offer. Fantastic. Well, I'm sorry that we didn't get to all the attendee questions today. If you did ask a question, as I mentioned before, and we weren't able to get you an answer today, we will send you an answer by email. I'd like to give a, a huge thank you uh, to our speakers for coming on board today, sharing their insights, opinions, and expertise. Once again, Catherine Sizemore, Senior MySQL and MariaDB Database Administrator at Datavail, and Devin Gallagher, Senior Sales Engineer at IDERA. If you would like to review this presentation or send it to a colleague, you can use the same URL that you used for today's live event. It will be archived. This will probably be up on dbta.com tomorrow afternoon. You'll get an email once that archive is up. And if you would like a PDF of the deck, you can go to the handouts section on the console once the archive is live. You can grab it there. Also, again, just for participate. Uh, participating in today's event, you could win this $100 Amazon gift card. The winner will be announced on March 31st. We will reach out to you via email if you are the lucky viewer. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and we hope to see you again soon. Great. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, everybody. Always engaging with DBTA. Thanks.